Uh, Greg, it's a great time to be in the cattle industry, mate. It really is, Ben. I mean, I guess we've been waiting for it for a while, but finally uh, the prices have sort of turned around and we're seeing prices that, yeah, if they can be sustained, we'll start to see infrastructure spending back at the grassroots level and, you know, that'll only be great for the future of our industry and, you know, we can turn things around a bit finally. Tell me, there's a lot of rebuilding to do in the Australian herd, so how do you think that's going to pan out? Well, like from a, from a macro point of view, from across the country, it's going to be a long journey back, isn't it? I mean, the Americans are suffering from the same sort of dilemma, and uh, yeah, look, I, I think the actual procedure is going to take quite some time. But I think it, yeah, it is definitely going to have to be by people joining more maiden heifers. In a lot of ways, puts pressure on the selection of suitable sires for joining these heifers. Yeah. Greg, tell me a bit about what you got on offer for the sale this year. Yeah, well, this year we've got three sire lines that are genuine calving ease bulls. Um, the Clutenuri F10 bull is probably one of the best bulls that we've seen more recently for his calving ease ability and just his general other attributes. I mean, he's not, not a super growth bull, but he's got nice muscling and uh, they're cattle with great skin and, and easy doing. And I think, you know, he's certainly a, a bull that we're looking forward to, you know, sharing in the progeny of him with our clients. Ball blade debonair bulls, pretty similar that way. Perhaps a little bit more growth, but again, very, very safe carving bull and the Hass GPS bull when we uh, first selected him our reason for using him was because of his his marbling and his easy doing he, he is a, a bull with great ability to you know well he shows positive fatness but he also has great fat distribution and we're really happy with the way he looks but and that carving ease has actually improved with him over the since we actually uh, selected and used him. Yeah. You've got some pretty exciting new yearling bulls on offer this year, so tell us a bit about that. Yeah, this is the first time, Ben, that we've ventured into the yearlings. It's interesting that two of these sire groups that we've got represented here are both, they are by 14 month old bulls and joined to cows and they've we've, well, we're excited by them. I, I think the, the three H8 bulls that we've got going up for offer yeah they're pretty special and and the uh, two J37s J37 was a Frankel son he's got two magnificent um, sons there in that draft and and the H35 bull who was joined to all our first carvers yeah there's two pretty smart really easy early maturing type you know the sort of bulls that are going to work over cows and produce these domestic feeders. Greg, tell us a few other features that you got on the sale with the two-year-old bulls. Yeah, well, we um, we used a couple of sons of O'Neill's prime time, uh, a prime star 80. That pedigree, of course, goes back to the old prime time bull who we'd had a, had a fair bit to do with. Uh, he was heavily used in the summit crest herd, had lots of carcass data, and these sons look really good. You know, they're powerful big fellas with plenty of softness and great mobility. And both had a corker cows, which is interesting. And of course, corker's the, our bull that did so well in that first benchmark sire program. So it's good to see that, you know, the proof coming from those bulls in that uh, uh, benchmark program, yeah. they're breeding on, yeah. yeah. Greg, uh, the cattle look great. Uh, congratulations and best luck for the sale. Thanks very much, Ben. It's been great.